Seven, Coda. Harshon glared over her spectacles at Romero. What does that even mean? She said, exasperatedly. Reality has two layers. Romero took an unhurried mouthful of coffee and tilted back in his chair again, pondering how to answer as though oblivious to Harshorn's expression. Ten measured seconds ticked past on the clock as the expression on her face grew steadily more impatient. Wolf looked down at the stack of case studies he'd brought with him. Just as it seemed Harshorn was about to start shouting, Romero abruptly spoke. Every electron is identical with every other electron, yes? Eh, uh, okay. But... The same for every proton, neutrino, etc. From which it follows that every atom of hydrogen is a clone of every other atom of hydrogen, the same for oxygen, and so on. From which it follows that every molecule of H2O is identical and interchangeable. Which means, in reality, there's only one molecule of water in this coffee, exactly duplicated very many times, and duplicated again in my body and yours. If you say so, this had better be... But every up quark is identical with every other up quark, too. The same for down and the other flavors. And each membrane which makes up each quark is also identical, so it's not just every atom of hydrogen that's the same, it's every atom of everything. Mr. Romero, I didn't understand any of that. And I'm not convinced you did, either. But what's all this got to do with two universes? And what's it got to do with the company? Miss Harshorn, if there's only one thing in the universe, a vibrating membrane of energy duplicated infinitely many times, how come it doesn't look that way? What's the difference between the water in my coffee and the water in you? Space, said Wolf. They're in different places. Yes, they're spatially different and temporally different. But what is space and time? Ah, uh, well, space is what matter exists in and events happen in time. Space-time is the background. It's the thing that gets curved by matter. And the curvature is gravity. That's what Einstein said, wasn't it? That's what the man said. But the concept of the space inside an atom is just a metaphorical extension of the concept of space between macro-scale objects in the human world. Subatomic particles aren't really like miniature billiard balls. They're more like equations. It doesn't make sense to talk about space between equations. What we call time is just the interval between events. An event is a change of state or place, but all states and places are ultimately the same. So you're saying there's no such thing as time or space? Or space-time, or matter, or energy? In physics. Yet we experience them. So where do they exist? Um, what do you mean, where? In our minds. Consciousness doesn't perceive differences of interval and place. It creates them. So you're telling me the universe is an illusion, said Hoshuan sarcastically. No, I'm saying it's a second-level phenomenon, created by the universe's own emerging self-consciousness, of which humanity is a part. The term are just a much larger part. Yeah, okay. Whatever. So what? So, if time only exists at the second level, time travel only exists at the second level. But what happens at the first level when we do it? All that technology that Omar gave us, did you think it was for travelling in time? That's just a mental thing. All that equipment is for decoupling the physical universe from the mental one, letting the mental one jump back in the time stream, and reconfiguring the physical universe to match. We change the description of the world. They change the world to make it fit. A silence descended on the room as Wolf and Harshorn digested what the younger man had said. Romero went back to his cup, staring off into the middle distance. The clock read 06.59. Harshorn broke the quiet. You didn't bring me here for a physics lecture. Or a metaphysics one. You said this concerns the company and the world. It's breaking down. The two levels sometimes don't quite realign. 
Maybe it's a fault in the technology, or... Wolf finished the sentence. Or someone's trying to use it without knowing what they're doing. Could be someone in the company doing a little freelance, or we've got a leak. Someone's selling trade secrets. And whoever's buying can't be trusted to operate it properly. Okay, boys, said Harshorn. I'm not too hot on the philosophy, but bad business, I understand. Pilfering, black markets, idiots messing around with toxic toys, that's my area. But I'm going to need some actual evidence. And I'm thinking, young wolf, that that big pile of manila envelopes on the table is it. Can you break it down for me? Sure, said Wolf, picking up one envelope from the top of the pile, flicking it open and skimming over the first page. Joran Evans, 78, grandfather, went back 50 years to give himself a message. Instead, he just disappeared for an hour, came back with no memory of where he'd been. The text did a scan, and it looks like he was taken out of stream as normal and just spent an hour out of it without being reinserted. No evidence of double-tracking. You mean he was outside of time for an hour? Well, you can't be outside of time for a duration of time, but... Yeah. Anything special about him? Go back for an unusual reason? Um... Wolf consulted the page again. Nope. Just wanted to deliver a message to himself. So, what was the message? Just don't marry your beard. Harshorn blinked. Come again? Evans was a gay. Had a pretend girlfriend way back. Married her for cover. Made both of them miserable. Whole lives, very tragic. Wanted to tell himself not to do it. Nothing strange about that, interjected Romero, looking up. We get a dozen of those every month. At least, put in Harshorn, stifling a yawn. Did we try sending him again? Eh. Uh, Wolf flipped to page two. We offered him a refund or retry. He took the refund. And came back the next day wanting the retry. Paid, went back, came back, no prob. Seems he told the girl, married her anyway, and they're both happy with bits on the side. Consider my heart duly warmed. What about the others? Wolf selected another folder, this time seemingly at random from the middle, and scanned the first page, speaking as he did. Claudette, surname redacted. Paid cash to go back a week. She had had a three-day fling with some guy. The boyfriend found out and dumped her. Wanted to make sure it didn't happen. Told herself not to do it, said Harshorn. Nodding. Actually, no. Wanted to waylay the guy. Stop him taking advantage of her when she was drunk and vulnerable. Drunk and vulnerable for three days. Yeah, right. It's just how she tells it. But anyway, she went back and... Wolf gave a sharp, barking laugh. What? He did it to her again? Oh, she had a three-way with herself? <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Shot out Romero, leaning further back and grinning. Don't pretend you haven't. But this is weird. She got sent back ten thousand years. Stayed there an hour and got pulled back automatically. Ten thou? I thought we couldn't go back that far. You sure it wasn't the nerds putting in the wrong numbers? Maybe they were drunk and vulnerable. The numbers check out. We put her back seven days' worth. She just stepped out in mud hut time. Actually, we can go back as far as we want, physically, put in Romero. It's just the Tomors won't let us. Apparently we're not mature enough. I can see why they might think that, said Harshorn dryly. This Claudia can't have made a complaint, or I'd have heard about it. We gave her the refund sent an agent back to deliver the message gratis, and asked Miss Claudette very politely not to tell anyone. I trust she agreed in writing. The docket's with the lawyers, just in case. Okay, so we're covered. But that's a big pile on the table, 
Just how many of these cases are there? About 50, where the problem was big enough for the client to notice. As for micro-problems... He trailed off. Thousands, said Romero with an odd relish. Probably millions, really, but we only catch a few. And you think there's going to be more? Harshon asked. More and bigger, said Wolf. I don't know. I need... Give me another one. Wolf fished another report from the middle of the pile and looked at the first page. Li Ho, 35. Parents, emigres from China. Childhood infection. Easily treatable, but the doctor botched the op. Left him with permanent leg pain and a limp. Wanted us to send an agent back to tell the family, use a different doctor. Agent went back, no hitches. Oh. Wolf stared at the page, blinking for several seconds. What is it? He... The agent found the family, but... Ho was dead. He had died at age five, six years before. You're saying when Ho was a boy, he was already... What are you saying? It looks like the act of going back to when he was eleven kicked him into an alternate timeline. Maybe. You're going to have to give me more than maybes. Wolf's eyes flicked rapidly over the second sheet, and then the third. The agent got back, and we interviewed Ho. He said he now remembered... Oh, God. He remembered being five years old and being taken to a funeral. But it was his funeral. He saw his own corpse before they cremated it. Romero spoke quietly. Mr. Wolf, sir, you've got me properly spooked out. Harshorn took off her spectacles, held them inert in her hands as she stared at the wall, and put them back on again. I have two questions, she said. One. Is this going to get worse? Wolf replied. It's been growing steadily for at least six months now. At first it was all microscopic. Now we've got people dying and going to their funerals. And I've, uh, I have reason to believe the other companies are seeing the same thing. I see. And two, if we don't manage to stop it, how far will it go? I have absolutely no idea.